You're listening to First Basel. Hello and welcome to First Basel, a show where we learn together how to take that first Basel toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. My name is Candice Olushala, and y'all, I know it's been a long time, but I'm back. So it's a new season, doing a new thing. I'm playing around with video, so you're going to see... <laughs> We gonna see what that looks like. Okay, guys, we go try it out. Um, but I'm really excited about this because I have been working on this, praying about it, re-strategizing for a year and a half or so on how I'm gonna do this. And a lot of things have transpired since I started trying to figure this out. Um, but I feel ready. I feel ready to do this. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not nervous because I am nervous today, but I think I've, I've prepared myself enough to at least jump in and try. So I wanted to start off this new season and we're talking about seasons of transition. A lot of us have been going through a lot of transitions in the last few years and I'm really excited to talk with people this season regarding some of the transitions that they have been going through and how they're navigating them, if they're still in them, or if they already went through them, what those transition periods felt like, looked like. And I want to share all those things with you guys. So I'm going to be learning. Hopefully you guys will be learning as well. And we're going to go on this journey of transition together this season. So without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to one of my dear friends. I met her last year when I moved out to Los Angeles and she's fun. She's bubbly. She loves food. And you're going to see how much she loves food in here in a second. But she's a content creator. She is a vibrant human being, really sassy. She's really good at dancing. You guys like just a bright spot in your day if you ever encounter her or anything that she posts. So I want to introduce you guys to my sweet sister, Eunice Reyes from Rated V Food. Eunice girl, how you doing? Hello. Great. Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you for that intro. <laughs> oh, girl, you my girl. I love it. We, I mean, we, we have seen each other go through some of this transition stuff oh, together yes. and um, you have just been an inspiration to me watching you navigate it and you're doing it with such grace even though you might not feel like that um right. you like yeah what <laughs> where, where's the gray i don't see it um no but i i mean from being able to see you it's it's really been it's been wonderful too i feel like i'm a secret apprentice um watching you do what you do um and studying studying how you navigate life so why don't you why don't you say a little bit about yourself and then we'll we'll have a little conversation about your transition all right well thank you for that yeah i'm so excited to be on here and just also honored to be your first guest on your first video podcast yeah girl when we first met you told me about how you wanted to do video and i was like yes you have to do video. It's so good. <laughs> and then now here we are a year we're later. Here. So we're here. I'm yes. very excited. Um, so my name is Eunice Reyes. I am the creator of Rated V Food. It is a platform dedicated to exciting people about vegan food and travel on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you know, but you know, it's not as present there. <laughs> but, <laughs> hashtag millennial. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> But basically, the mission of all that platform, like I mentioned, is to excite people about vegan food. Because when I went vegan, it's, it was difficult to even embrace the idea because, you know, you grow up your entire life eating everything. And then one day you decide uh, you're, you're convicted of going down a different path and transitioning to maybe a different diet. And this could be just talk about anything. And I wanted to, but when you're so passionate about something and 
you're so convicted of it. You All you want to do is share about it, right? And you want to share about it in a fun way. And so I guess later I'll tell about my story about also how that all happened. But that is me. I love traveling. I've been to around 25 countries now. I'm going to be hosting a trip to Vietnam and Cambodia this fall. The first ones ever. Vegan food travel is going to be a lot of fun. So I still don't put about me. I don't know if I need to mention anything else. <laughs> girl, I'm already like, I just want to eat. This is, girl. And I'm in the middle of a fast. So this is the worst no. time for me to be talking to you. But you know what? The Lord will hold me together. It's going to be all right. <laughs> we were like, she loves food and she's sassy. I was like, I love this. I'm the sassy girl who loves food. That, that kind of does describe me. <laughs> that, that is you. That If anyone meets you for two minutes, they're going to figure that out immediately so i love this okay so you're doing vegan content creation you are traveling and teaching people how to travel and still stay within their dietary means while also having fun doing it and not making it a drab so you said you didn't always grow up vegan you're you know you've navigated several transitions that have gotten you to this point where you're teaching this to the world. So where do you where do you want to start with your story? Oh, we can start from the beginning. So where what? Okay. So let's start with first job, right? We've all been through there. Like when I went to college, I knew I wanted to study something in business. I was also really into the idea of fashion. So I was like, how do I study business and fashion, whatever, right? Went into college with the goal, like it was interesting because from day one, I remember thinking, I want to work in the business side of retail. I want to work in fashion. I want to work for a well-known company. Nordstrom was the one that I respected the most, even though I never shopped there because I couldn't afford it. My parents couldn't afford it, but in my head, I was like, that's the goal. <laughs> and, you know, and now I think back and I'm like, I never prayed, God, is this the right job for me? Is this the right path? I literally was like, nope, this is what I'm going to do. God help me get to my destination. Thank you. Let's go. Right. Um, so I graduated college with a merchandising management degree and in business. And I literally after graduation, I started working for Nordstrom. Back then, Nordstrom was very strict about making you start from the bottom. So on the sales floor, I worked for the shoe department. So imagine you just spent who knows how much money on a college degree and you get a bringing, you know, you apply for the retail company you've been wanting to work for. And then you're told, no, no, you have to work. So, <laughs> right. And I was, it's humbling, but I was like, you know what? that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I need to learn how to do this. And I was so intimidated by the idea because I had never shopped there in my entire life. Like I mentioned, Nordstrom sales is all commission. You do not get paid a base salary. Oh, Yeah. So if you sell shoes, you make money. If you get returns, they take away that money from your paycheck, basically your balance for the month. I know. <gasps> Well, all those people who wear shoes for a month and then return it because of the Nordstrom customer service policy, just remember, you're taking away money from somebody's paycheck. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I know. So, uh, you know, I was so intimidated by that whole idea because I was like, how do I sell a product in my head that I find expensive because I've never been able to shop there? and try to convince somebody to buy it. You know, I was, you know, and in Nordstrom, there's different levels. This is, okay, this might turn into a long story. I hope they're okay with this, because I now have a little testimony that goes into this. But <laughs> um, anyways, so I just, I kind of learned, like there's different levels in Nordstrom. So there's levels one means you're not profitable. Two means you're profitable, but you know, it's the bare minimum. Three is you're above average, and four is your pace setter. That's the best you can be in a sales on, the, on your team, right? It's the highest level. So when I started, you know, even with the little that I knew, I was always a two. Thank goodness I wasn't a one, but I was, you know, the bare minimum. And I would have to learn from my like it, my coworkers to and just kind of figure out like how do I do this? Like I don't. It just and quick. After a while, I learned 
it, you have to sell people a vision. You can't sell them just a product. I, these women sometimes would look at these stilettos, right? And they were like, this is cute. But they're like, when I, what do I need this for? What am I going to wear this in? But they came for sandals, right? So I would say, give them the sandals and then I'd bring the stiletto and I'd be like, hey, just, I was like, these shoes are so versatile. You're not just going to wear them one time. You're going to wear them with, you can wear them with jeans. You can wear them with like, you know, on a date, very casual look. But let's say you have a, you know, a really nice event and you can put these with some trousers and then like a jacket or maybe you have a dress and you can use this at a wedding. I would like and give them a vision of what they could use it for, right? And they'd be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So anyways, I eventually started to figure out how sales work, which I feel like it's now looking back, I was like, God was training me on how to just sell, period. I think mm -hmm. it was like, I just needed to learn to do it. It was a skill I was going to need eventually in life, right? And become comfortable with it because at the beginning it was not comfortable. And some, and anytime you are needing to, anytime you need to grow, it's always uncomfortable at the beginning and you just have to just go all in full force, right? right. Um, and so the interesting thing was after a year, I was a little frustrated because, you know, my goal, I was very ambitious. So I was like, I want to climb up the corporate ladder, da, da, da. Like, I didn't study to be a retail shoes, <laughs> you know, like sales, which, I, you know, and uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Great. So be well, before I get to that, though, before I get to that, I started Nordstrom June of, you know, 2010. June of 2010. And oh, big uh, newness. Yes. My gosh, like, that was so long ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 20 Right out of college. And then, um, you know, or was it? I didn't work on the Sabbath because you and I grew up Seventh Adventist. So, uh, for those who don't know about Seventh Adventist, we keep the Sabbath. You know, it's a day where we don't work. And I was so convicted. I was like, no, I don't need to work on the Sabbath to try and make more sales, even though in retail, it was the busiest day and the day you were going to make the most money. Right. right. But in my interview, I had told HR and they were like, it's fine. It's okay. Right. Well, in Oregon, where I started, the summers, whoo, the, your sun doesn't go down to almost 10 p.m. Like we have long evenings, which is something I miss. Actually, that was actually one of the nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have long evenings. But in the winter, the sun sets at like 4 30. Right. Like it's so early. And so, when fall started coming around, and I remember it was in November, my manager, because I think she was worried about HR and, you know, religious like accommodation, like she was worried that I was, I, she didn't want to, she didn't want to risk anything, right? That's my, so she asked me, she was like, hey, I'm going to change your schedule so it doesn't interfere. She gave me Fridays and Saturdays off. Now, most people would rejoice like, oh my gosh, I have two days off in a row. Like, this is amazing. This never happens to you, Rizzo. My first initial reaction was panic because I was like, wait, Friday is a really busy day. If I'm not working Saturdays, I'm going to miss out on all the money that I'm going to make on Friday. And I was like, and I remember my first reaction was like, no, I need to tell her that I'll work Fridays during the day. I just can get off a little earlier, right? And then something, I don't know what it was. It was like a voice or some piece that told me, why, what if this is a gift that you're being given to just rest and like, can't you like, maybe you should just trust that this is something that God wants for you, right? Mm. And, you know, it was something, it was something along, I can't remember exactly, but it was something along that feeling of being like, why are you worried? Like, are you, do you think God's not going to be able to take, to hand, like, take care of you because of this? Yeah. And I remember I just prayed and I was like, okay, God, if you think this is right, or this is workable, I'm going to give it a shot, right? From that month, I went from a level two salesperson to a level three and then a level four, and I never went back. I was a level four until I stayed at that, at that, in that position. I was the top, one of the top five salespeople, and I never worked a Friday or a Saturday. It, like, I, okay. It was wild. Hold like, on. I know. <laughs> Let's pause here. I have, hold on. Wait a second. So, you get told that the solution is going to be just take Friday, Saturday off. You mm -hmm. panic. Mm -hmm. You feel like, you you know, something told you just 
just take the rest for what it is and see what happens. What, what were you doing Sunday through Thursday that you felt like actually got you to start picking up on how to go to a level three or a level four? Were you even thinking about how to do a level three or level four or were you just trying to be consistent and you saw yourself going up? I think so. I think I had met the I mentioned before. I was already kind of learning the process based on just like coworkers who were nice enough to just help me out sometimes during sales and I would mm -hmm. observe and just learn and then just trial and error, just keep being, just keep trying, keep trying. You find out on the job what works, what doesn't work. You know, you just start noticing things. I think also because I had two days off, I came in ready. I was like so ready to work because I had two, you know, I was just like, all right, you know what? I'm not even going to look at my numbers to see what my returns were. And I think also maybe what helped was the people who purchased on Fridays or Saturdays and then did returns. And then I would come in and just sell them something new. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I think it was the ambition and the drive that I had after just having two full days of rest um, and just learn, you know, learning on the job and wanting to just make my manager proud, you know, because I was the intern salesperson. I wasn't just the salesperson in that department. I was the intern. You know, mm. at the beginning when I started, I was sloppy all over the place. I had never, this is real life, it's my first job ever, right? This is where you learn leadership skills. You have to learn so many different things. And, you know, at the beginning, it's just rough. It's rough times. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and so uh, I just remember being like, I remember a coworker of mine telling me, she's like, Eunice, how on earth are you getting these sales numbers and you've never worked a Friday and a Saturday? And I just I couldn't, I didn't know what to say. Cause in my head, I was like, this is all God. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> and yeah. So then and to go from there. <laughs> so, um, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm like ambitious. I'm driven to get, you know, climb the corporate ladder. Now at the time, the only career path that you could have is you had to learn sales become an assistant department manager, and then a department manager, and then you could apply to go to corporate. Okay. Okay. So the problem is, in order to be a manager, you have to be able to work on Saturdays. No questions asked. Uh oh. And I remember talking to HR, being like, oh my gosh, am I going to be stuck here forever? Like, is this my only option? And then... Um, you know, so I would ex t express with her what my my issue was and like, or what, you know, what I was thinking. And there were times where I was thinking, I was like, should I just leave this company and look for something else? And I was like, no, I don't know, but I've already, you know, established a, re a, a reputation here and I've already, start, you know, I put in my foundation. So anyways, I was always praying like, God, I don't know what to do. Well, there are these very, very, very few positions within Nordstrom called store administrators. Okay. Basically, they're the, the assistants to the store manager and the HR manager. And there's only one in every Nordstrom Rack store and one in every main line is what they call them. Full line stores, the big Nordstrom's, the ones that's not, the, that you see at the mall, right? Not right. Nordstrom Rack. Um, the problem is most of these jobs as women who have worked there for like 20 years and they're not retiring, Right. Uh, it's usually, so they're just there forever. It's like, it's one of those lifer jobs. <laughs> okay. Yes. You nail it and what? you hold on to it. Yeah. So one day this position opens up in Clackamas, which was the equivalent of a 45 minute drive from where I lived. So okay. it wasn't ideal, but it wasn't, too, you know, I was like, whatever. And I applied, they, she told my HR manager told me about it because the schedule was a fixed schedule Monday through Friday. 7 30 to 4 p.m or whatever and then you leave right it's a right. perfect schedule never has work weekends i applied i did not get the job and i was discouraged because i was like god i thought this was your my out like i thought this was what you had for it. so you know whatever i keep doing the same thing i'm doing selling shoes um, about a month or so later i get another call with another position he opened up at a different location this was in the downtown portland which was still about a 30 minute drive for me, but I could take the train 
and it was a quicker, I mean, don't get me wrong, you still have to start at 7 30 in the morning. So I had to wake how I woke up at 5 30 a.m. back then. I have no idea. I'm I can barely wake up at eight nowadays. <laughs> I'm dead. Y'all, this is what millennials are struggling with. Okay. Yes. Don't come at us. We are struggling to sleep. We get it now. I'm so sorry for anyone oh. that we talked about when we were kids and they hit their 30s. I'm very sorry. Yes. Oh my gosh. She's so I ended up getting that job. And okay, this is like so off topic because I know this has nothing to do with my Instagram page, but it's like there's are just moments in life where I feel like God refines you. Mm. And maybe, maybe it'll have the connection later, but these were all refining moments for me. Like it, then now I look back and I'm like, thank you, God. I needed mm. that at yeah. the time. I literally thought I was going to die and I just wanted to cry all the time. Jeez. So anyways, so I get this job. They offered to me because I had mentioned about how I had planned events. I think I had planned events in college. And I think that's why, that's why the guy hired me because the manager. Now this particular manager, when he hired, he was very more, he was more passive aggressive. I had never worked with anybody like him in my life. I never been on people like that in my life. I grew up with the Latino community. There's no such thing as passive aggressive. <laughs> like, at least not that I know of. It's usually like direct. Like it could be angry, but they'll at least tell you what they're thinking, right? Right. So there's I'm not I wasn't very good at like guessing what people were anyway. So anyway, this guy was my boss. He hated me. Like he thought I was so incompetent. So, and I was, I've always been like this, you know, straight A student, really ambitious, always driven, wanting to get good grades. Like, so for someone to tell me that you are not doing good enough, you are not what I expected you to be, that broke me so much. But because of my like drive, I was like, you know what, this hurts, but I'm just going to keep going every day. I need, I showed up to work probably wanting to throw up. I remember being anxious every time walking into work, but I was like, you know, just put a smile on your face, be nice to him, like do your best. And for whatever reason, he just didn't think like he, cause he had promoted his previous assistant to a department manager. So she was still working in the store. So they were like very buddy buddy and they would talk in their office, you know, like talk about people. I don't know what they were doing. Right. Yeah. So that made me, I think that didn't help either. And one day he calls me into his office and well, I don't start crying. I'm like reliving this moment. <laughs> Girl, you cry. Um, it's okay. It's I'm okay. Like, oh my God. It's okay. This is like 20 year old Eunice. No, <laughs> 20. no I wasn't 22. <laughs> oh my gosh, girl. That's okay. Um, so he calls me into his office and he's like, I don't think this is the right job for you. He's like, I know your dream is to go to corporate. It's hard. I don't know. I'm crying. <laughs> Girl, it's okay. It's okay. He's like, I know your dream is to go to corporate. If you want, I'll write you a recommendation letter and I'll recommend you to somebody that I know there. I know a lot of contacts. And, you know, this just, this isn't working. Hmm. And I remember just like, my dad picked me up from work that day and I was, I just started bawling. I remember he was like, what's wrong? I have never cried so hard. And then like, um, um God. <laughs> like, girl, this is real life. That's okay. That's okay, yeah. girl. Anyways. Um, and so I remember thinking, you know, I was more upset because I was like, no, I knew I could do this or I thought I could do this. Like, am I really not good enough? Like, is this something I really can't do? I really thought that God had given me this position because there was no way out outside of management, right? And then um, I remember I was, I thought to myself, well, you know what, if he hates me, let me just take him up on his offer. Like he want, you know, I want to go to corporate anyways, right? Mm -hmm. But then I thought, but then it wouldn't be on the right circumstances. Like, do I really want to go somewhere 
with someone recommending you when really deep down inside they think I'm incompetent. And, you know, because the whole job entailed basically becoming a leader. I did not have the leadership skills yet mm. at that time. Yeah. I just, yeah, I needed to learn so much. And he just didn't see, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't see that in me at the time. Yeah. Even though I was trying so much, like, you know, so much as I could. Well, I remember I was that day, I was like, all right, well, maybe I should take more law for And then I heard this voice in my head being like, if, like, if I didn't think you could do it, I would have never given you that job. Like, mm -hmm. I remember thinking that. And I was like, you said why? Yes. So the next day, I go up into my boss's office and I'm like, I think you should give me another chance. I straight up was like, no, I want another chance. I was like, if you don't like it, then I'll leave. But I think I deserve another opportunity. I know things have been difficult these years, but I think if, you know, I'll have XYZ more communication with you. I don't know what I said, but I basically walked in his office and was like, no, give me another chance. I think he was shocked that I even did that. Yeah. I think he was expecting me to cower away and be like, okay. And I was like, no. And I wish I could say things were rainbows and butterflies right after that. And they were. It took a few months. It wasn't until he, his, remember, his buddy buddies, he had two. He had two buddy buddies. They left. They got promoted to different jobs outside of that uh, store. Once they left, he had no one really to rely on. He didn't have anyone to be close with. What the thing I'm happy about is that I never was tempted to sink down to his level and dis and talk disrespectfully of him. Because he was a really, don't get me wrong, he gave me a hard time, but he was a really nice guy. He had a big heart. You know, he just, that was just the way he handled relationships with people. Even my, the, the girl who was in my position before me, she said that she had similar experience when she first started. The HR manager also had a similar experience when she started with him. He just had that pattern of behavior where he would basically hate your guts and you would want to cry all the time, but you just needed to keep going, right? So it wasn't until they left, him and I be started becoming like better coworkers in the sense like he started relying on me more. I started to feel more confident in what I was doing. I always dreamed of potentially getting in. So in Nordstrom, they had, they had recognition meetings. And one of the meetings was, it was uh, one of the awards was the all-star award. So one employee from each store would receive the all-star award. It was like one of, it was a big deal. And I remember all the admins and all the other stores would always get one. And I never would get one. And I was like, I'm never getting one. My boss hates me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to always think that I'd be like, oh, that one day I got one, but I don't think that's going to happen, right? At this point, I just hope we get along, right? Well, I, it was been, by that point, I had been there a year already because I worked in total of like two and a half years. Yeah, I worked it. So on my second year, for whatever reason, you know, I finally, I knew how to run that store. Like I learned everything. I learned every, I knew everybody's names. I knew exactly what everything was, you know, I, there was, I wasn't perfect at it, but I was like way better than when I began, began, right? And him and I had better communication, whatever. We ended up becoming friends. Like he finally, when he just saw, he saw the chains of what maybe he wanted to see, he started relying on me more. I remember one time for, it was for something, I don't know if it was a admin appreciation day or it was my birthday. I couldn't remember, but he gave me a cookbook and he had never gifted me something before. And I was like, Thank you. I was like, I think things are changing, right? Like, we ended up finally getting along. And one day, we have this recognition meeting. And to my surprise, I was nominated as an all-star. And I just remember thinking, like, how on earth did I go from zero <laughs> to, like, receiving this award, right? From the same guy who thought I couldn't do anything. Wow. And so that was a turning point for me because it was like, okay, like I was actually, God was right. Like he gave me this because he, he thought I could do it. I just had to like believe in myself a land more. Yeah, girl. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're well, 
Yeah. But it's, um, it's cool to see. It's cool to see where you were in those moments, like remembering fighting in yourself every day and like, am I doing, am I doing it? Am I doing it? I have no idea. I'm trying. I don't know. I think I'm seeing improvement. I think I'm doing that. And then for someone to finally stand up and acknowledge it, not just to you, but to other people, right. there's just something so reassuring of a value that was always there, but that you you now become assured in it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, girl, that's that's emotional to remember, you know? Yeah, it was like, oh my gosh. I literally wanted to throw up every time I would go into work for the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> for me to get to that level of anxiety, that's very rare, very yeah. rare. Yeah. Um, but so I just remember, you know, from then on, like we were really close, like we were close. We, we, you know, we worked well together. He trusted me. I, you know, everything was fine. He ended up losing his job. And yes, I don't, to this day, I don't know why he lost it. I don't know what was going on behind it. There was something going on, but he ended up losing his position. And he, and all I could think when he left, I mean, all I could think of was to thank him. That's mm. all I wanted to say. I was like, I, I can't say, I don't shit. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> I, I just told him, I was like, thank you so much for putting up the fire up my butt at the time I needed it because that made me who I am today. It was not, it was not comfortable, but if it weren't for that, I would have never gotten my act together as quickly or as much as I needed to. You know what I mean? Like that helped. It was literally refinement of fire. Like it was, it, you know, it's either do or die at that point. Right. When you're in situations like that, you either, you either quit it or you keep going. Um, choose which one, choose your heart. Right. And so I was always just so grateful that he still allowed me a second chance, even when he maybe at the time didn't see that, I was doing my job well or whatever. And, but then we left on good terms. Um, sadly now he's actually passed away, but, um, but I've been always grateful as, even though as uncomfortable and as, as much as it triggers me to cry again, to even think about that time in my life, like I'm very grateful that I went through that season because it prepared me for just like everything else in my life too. Right. Um, and when I got the new manager, the regional manager told her, by the way, you have one of the best admins in the whole region. And I was just like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't even expect that either. Right. It was for me, I was happy enough that my boss thought I was good enough. But then to have been told that now I have become the best of, every, of my, my peers, I... You know, I was just insanely grateful to God, too, for just helping shape me, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, anyways, after that, I ended up going to Seattle for the corporate job that I wanted eventually, right? And it wasn't even a promotion. It was a lateral move. Um, I ended up uh, doing a, an admin job for a for the buying office because my dream was always to become a buyer okay and that was always my end goal until i found out what a buyer actually did and <laughs> seeing the day-to-day -day. as soon as i got to seattle because then so that's why i ended up in seattle for five years the corporate office merchants in seattle as soon as i saw what their job was and just it wasn't so much the job it was the dynamic of how they they just seemed stressed out all the time Mm -hmm. They had to constantly get orders from their management. They were always stressed out. They had, and I was like, "Do I really want to do this? Am I even cut out for this?" Mm -hmm. I was like, "I don't even know anymore." I was like, and I remember questioning, be like, "It was the weirdest thing." It was almost like as soon as I got to my destination of where I was dreaming of going, of where I was like, "God, I want to make it to the corporate office. I want to do this." It's almost like I thought, "I don't think this is for me." Like I honestly don't think this is my calling in life. Right. But at this point, I'm like, whatever, I'm here. Right. Um, 
this is 2014 at this point. And I ended up finding, you know, I ended up looking for different avenues to work within the company because I was like, okay, maybe I'm not going to be a buyer. So what's another role in this company? I found up, I ended up finding out about product development. And I like the idea of product development because even though you weren't a buyer, so you had to be in charge of like this whole, you know, buying, buying team, essentially, whatever. Um, product developers were like project managers. You basically are the liaison between manufacturers your merchandisers, your designers, you are told we want this handbag and it has to retail for this amount. So make sure it costs this amount. But the designer will give you all the beautiful embellishments that cost all the money in the world. <laughs> and but you still have to make them happy aesthetically, right? It still has to look pretty, look close enough to the original design while also making the merchandisers happy because it has to stay within a certain margin. And the manufacturer's happy because you have to give them enough units or something they can work with, right? Mm -hmm. So eventually I got trained, you know, I moved up a few positions that kept doing lateral moves, but eventually got into that role. And that was my last and final role. And also I did product development for uh, five years, like three, four, three, yeah, because I'd be, I ended, I worked until Northstar until 2019. But let's fast, let's rewind a little bit. So in 2017, I'm already kind of like, it was like 2017, 2018. I'm like, I kind of want to do something different. I've been working for this company now for seven years at this point, right? Right. And I'm like, is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? Because, you know, it's the routine. You got, you know, you, to be there, even if there's not a lot to do. Yep. You know, there's, you're restricted to PTO because I love traveling. And I was like, I was always the kind of person who had a PTO balance of zero. I was like, ugh. I would look to my coworkers who had 200 hours. I'm like, do you want to wanna share those with me? Like, are you going to use those? <laughs> it was a bit for Ryan right now. I want to come back from vacation and count the days and then just see when I could take my next vacation because I was just obsessed, obsessed with traveling. Um, and then, you know, so I hated the restriction. And in around 2017 is when you started hearing about these entrepreneurs on, you know, either on YouTube or mm -hmm. selling t-shirts. It was the unconventional job, right? Where people were making careers for themselves by not having to work the nine to five. And I was just like, well, that seems kind of cool. I was like, how do you do that? And so my first entrepreneurship journey was actually selling t-shirts. They were, it was called Le Foodie, the food tea. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'm stopping right now. I mean, you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Not the food tea. I yes. I yeah, about the food. <laughs> I love you more for that. That is that game. I, I love puns. <laughs> um, I me and my cousin love puns and love dad jokes. We're here for it all the time. Love. Them. <laughs> I love but, it. Uh, so I started playing with that. I got all into it too because I was like, you know what? This could be, it was like almost like a creative outlet. Yeah. I, a friend of mine even told me, he's like, you know, you're probably not going to make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it'll be a good like business learning lesson. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but okay, I'm going to try it anyway. Worst case, mm -hmm. I just fail and I, I just, and you know, stop that. So I, um, I think that's when I started my Instagram. I think that's when I first opened my Instagram account was 2017. Uh, and because I wanted to start sharing pictures of where I could like, what the, you know, the samples or the pictures, whatever. It's like, the account is still live. I've never shut it down because I want to keep it there almost like a memory. So you can yes. still see like the like cute little, the cheesy t-shirts we used to make. Um, like one was photographer and there was like a bowl of pho on, on the, <laughs> on the shirt it was anyways um but I got into it but that allowed me to connect with the foodie community in Seattle at the time and now the food content creators were starting to become a thing around 17 26 that's when it was really starting to take off so I just like wait hold on huh. how did did I miss something how did you decide to make t-shirts around food oh sorry okay because I, I, okay, I was already a foodie. Yes. Okay, sorry. I was already a okay. big foodie. And I, when I was 
my idea initially was I want to sell t-shirts because I kept hearing all these podcasts of people selling t-shirts and making tons of money, right? With drop shipping. Um, and I was like, well, I want to do that. But I was like, what's, what are my t-shirts going to be about? And I was like, well, I love food. I was like, that'd be fun. Let's just do food t-shirts. Um, and so, so that, that's how I started that. And because of that, that's how I ended up connecting with the foodie community in Seattle, because at the time I was one of those Yelpers. I was one of those Yelp elite people who would re write reviews on all the places, at restaurants. And I was like, oh, I love this. So I was like, I just loved eating. I just loved eating and trying food and cooking. Like I just loved it all. Right. And, um, and so for me, it was fun. Like when, you, you know, after work, you just want to go out to eat and try new places or something with your friends. Right. So I got really into it. Well, Around that same time, I end up meeting a friend before I actually forget to that. At this time, my diet is I cook vegetarian at home. Okay. But I eat meat when I go to restaurants or when my parents make it. For whatever reason, I just never liked cooking meat at home. I wouldn't okay. cook every like maybe fish. You know, I hated cooking chicken because I was like, this is complicated. I was like, it all comes out dry. I was never good at cooking chicken. But like, <laughs> and so um, I always just like vegetarian food too, because I was always really into health. I was always, I got, but for middle school, high school, I remember I got really into it. Um, so even though I ate meat, I was enjoyed vegetarian food. And then growing up Adventist, you know, we're always taught this plant-based message too, of like, we're always eating vegetarian at potlucks. You know, we always told the benefits of diff of the plant-based diet. So, you know, I always had that in the back end. And then so during my whole little t-shirt extravaganza, and then I, I make, uh, I meet one of my friends who's still one of my really, really good friends to this day. I mean, because I also salsa dance, so I met him from salsa dancing, and we became really good friends, and then he was vegetarian. He was vegetarian, practically vegan, super healthy, doesn't drink coffee, all this stuff. I'm sitting here, when I first met him, I was like, dude, this guy could fool me to be Adventist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, but he was French, agnostic you know not coming from a faith background mm. and hearing his reasons for being vegetarian vegan and all the health you know principles that he followed from a different angle yeah and i was like this is stuff i've known my whole life but he's living it out way better than i am mm. and i remember thinking wow okay but you know that still didn't change my mind i was like whatever and then i saw a documentary called what the health and that was like the nail on the coffin because I was like, now I definitely know too much. I've been, you know, I've been living this like semi-vegetarian life my whole life. And then there's my friend here. He keeps telling me the benefits of like a plant-based lifestyle. This is all stuff I know. And now I'm seeing like all the other the ethical reasons and the health reasons, like from a you know, scientific perspective. And then, you know, the, it's not even forget it. Like talk about how they treat the animals, right? And you're just like, ah, I've seen too much, right? And I... Uh, the person helping me with my t-shirt business at the time was my cousin, Missy. I think you met her. I believe yeah. you've met her. So I remember Missy was the first person I texted. I was like, I think I need to go vegetarian. Like I was like, LaFoodie needs to go vegetarian is what I told her, right? So on my t-shirt Instagram, I started sharing a lot about vegetarian food and vegan food, where to go eat it. Cause remember I was still going to a lot of restaurants and posting them on Yelp and whatever. So I was starting to post about different restaurants in, in the Seattle area, but I was like, hold on. Nobody has signed up to watch about vegan vegetarian food on this t-shirt page. I was like, why do, why, maybe I should start a completely different platform and review food. Like my other foodie content creators that I've just met, they're thriving and they're just reviewing food general all over Seattle, but what it, but there's no one showing where you can eat vegetarian or vegan food. I was like, maybe I should do that. Right. And I, at first I thought to myself, I was like, I don't know. It's kind of, you know, it's, I don't even know what, I don't even know what to do. I didn't know anything about Instagram or YouTube that much. Right. I just knew how to post a story, but that was kind of it. <laughs> and then, um, and I remember talking to them one day, we were all, we had some food event and we were all just hanging out. I told them my idea, I was like, guys, I'm kind of thinking of starting this food page where I only showcase where to eat vegan food or vegetarian food, because I still wasn't fully vegan yet. I was vegetarian, right? With the goal to eventually become vegan. Um, 
And then they all told me, that's a great idea. No one's really doing that. You should call it Rated V for Vegan. And I was like, I love that name. And so I was like, okay, done. So, um, so then I kind of, that kind of started me on that journey because on Instagram at least. And then, but another goal of mine was YouTube because again, we started hearing more about how YouTubers were becoming full-time content creators. And so they didn't have to have the nine to five job anymore and they could just do whatever and they could, you know, do whatever. And there was a couple of YouTubers that I admired at the time. They were called the Fung Bros and they would, there were the two brothers and they would go and just review different, um, a lot of Asian restaurants mostly because they were Chinese. So they focused a lot on the Pan-Asian community. But I remember I loved their videos because I was like, they're entertaining, they're funny. I'm learning food through them and, you know, all of that. But then when I became vegetarian, I was like, I can't watch any of this content anymore. I was like, I'm having FOMO seeing what they're eating because I can't eat meat anymore, you know. And I would the, the videos I'd watch on like Netflix or whatever... I get FOMO from that too. I was like, you know what? And don't get me wrong. I still watch a lot of these shows. I just know I can't eat any of the food. But that was the problem. I was like, I'm watching all this and I can't eat any of the food. I was like, how come something like this doesn't exist for vegan vegetarian food? And I was like, maybe I should try it. I was like, I don't know. I don't even know anything about YouTube. I don't even know how to use cam. Do I need a camera? Do I need a mic? Like, I don't even know what I need. And um, so I remember that was like my first leap of transition like am I really gonna try this like I really have no idea what I'm gonna be doing I have no knowledge of how to even start YouTube but am I gonna try it right and I I'm the kind of person where I hate having the I wonder what would have happened if right hmm. I rather go in and fail so hard or get rejected so badly then to wonder what would have happened if I had, you know, pursued that thing or person or, you know, it applies to everything. Like right. I hate having regret. And, and so I was like, you know what? Worst case, it doesn't work. I, at least I can try. Right. Um, so I told myself that I was going to try it. Uh, I tried, I limited my excuses by just being like, you know what, what can I use? What do I have? What do I have right now? Because obviously at the beginning, you want to go low budget because you're not even sure if you're invested in this idea, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, at the time I had an iPhone 7, which I have, still had a camera, but it was an iPhone 7. A cousin of mine told me, you need a microphone because even if the quality of the video is not the greatest, people won't mind as long as the audio is good. And I was right. like, okay. So I was like, on, you, on Google, what microphone to buy for YouTube, right? Like I just, uh, you know, and, that's so many, and then I got a shotgun mic and a lapel mic, right? So I think, and then I got a little rig that I still have actually that I, oh, look at that. Girl, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What did, you know? I don't know, but I ended up getting a little a smartphone rig for like $35. So I think in total, I spent maybe what? $75. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is a decent investment. Just like, try it out. Um, and so my first video was still on YouTube. My very, very first YouTube was Cineholic. It was, it had just opened up in Seattle. It's an all vegan cinnamon roll place. Um, and they have one, you know, they have them all throughout the country. They had one shark tank as a, as a concept. So it's like cinnamon, but vegan, right? So everything in, in there is vegan. And I remember I just approached the, I just walked up into the restaurant one day and I was like, hi, I would love to do this YouTube video on you. I just started it. This is what my mission is. This is what I want to do, you know? And I didn't even have anything to show. I was just started to like, yeah, we, that's great. They're like, sure. And they, sure. you know, they, let, they gave me a free cinnamon roll that day. <laughs> they, they, they let me interview them. And I got to feel behind the scenes of how they, they made the cinnamon rolls. Mind you, at this time, I didn't know how to edit yet. I didn't know how to edit on iMovie desktop. I only knew how to edit iMovie mobile. <laughs> Girl, iMovie mobile? Girl. Yes. 
Do you know how long that video took me? Okay, and I was so glad because if I messed something up, I'd have to drag out the music to let you know, like, oh, if anyone's ever worked with I would be mobile. It's <laughs> I'm stressed. Can we? <laughs> I'm stressed listening to this girl. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then I remember that video, I was so excited. After I posted it, because I think 200 people saw it. So I had like 200 views. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like that to me was like 20,000. That was, that was oh, the equivalent in my head. I'm I'm still there. <laughs> I'm still at the, oh my God, 200. Yeah. <laughs> it's a like, lot. But when you even had zero. Exactly. Okay. It's a lot. It really yeah. is. Yeah. That's 200 people that saw it. I think they must have shared it with their team or something. But they're like, oh my gosh, we love it, whatever. And now when I look at the video, I was like, this is a terrible video, but okay. <laughs> but, but I remember having so much fun doing that video, even though I still didn't know what I was doing. I had to teach myself how to do a lot of things, whether it was searching on YouTube. I had you know, you just have to be resourceful and figure it out. And, and I never knew, what was it? Um, I've never, I never really had a clear path of what to do or how, meanwhile, I'm still doing my full-time job, right? So this is on the weekends or when I have free time. Mm. Um, and so I'm doing that. I, yeah, so I'm working my nine to five at Nordstrom. And then on weekends, I'm filming different restaurants. Again, with the tiny channel that I have, the one thing I will say in people's like, don't be afraid to just ask. You never know what opportunities people will give you because even, my favorite restaurant in Seattle, which by the way, if you're ever in Seattle, you have to go to Memnoon. Shout out to Memnoon because it's uh, Middle Eastern food. It's Levantine cuisine. So hummus, Muhammada, you know, uh, you know how much I love it. I always bring it to potlucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like but they are my favorite restaurant. Um, and so one day I, would call, I was like, I really want to do a, rest, a video on them to, to talk about how they have a lot of naturally vegan dishes in their cuisine. Right. And I had, I think at the time I had like 75 or 80 subscribers on YouTube. So I was like, oh, she's going to say no. But I was like, let me just ask anyways. Yeah. And they were like, they were just like, oh my gosh, we'd love to do it. Like, da, da, da. They, they treated me as if I had this big account. And I remember oh. just being like, wow. I was like, all because I wasn't afraid to ask. Right. Yeah. I could have really told myself, no, they're not going to do that. I'm going to have to buy my own boot or whatever, because you know, and just like not even ask them if I can film in the kitchen because they're not going to take me seriously. No, they treated me so well. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, you know, that video is still up there too. <laughs> they're all, all the old ones are up there. Um, but yeah. So then, um, what's it called? I'm trying to think what was that? I don't remember if you were going to ask me the question of this, but I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> after after you did that video? Yes. Um, um, like. What happened uh, after that video? Okay. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. No? Okay, sorry. For me, I, I, I got it now. Okay. Okay, so, you know, I've been filming, you know, part-time after work, you know, and it was funny because my one of my really good friends she, her and I would hang out all the time and she was like you know she looks back at me where I'm at now and where I started and she goes girl she was like I admire the fact that you were so consistent and persistent on putting out videos as often as you could because nobody was really watching number one <laughs> and she's like and I do remember we would be hanging out and you would tell me no no, no I can't go out tonight because I have to finish this video right like, I had no deadline. Nobody was giving me these deadlines. But mm. I was just like, you know, at the beginning, they say that you got to post like once a week. I don't think I was posting once a week. I think I was really trying. I was posting at least once or twice a month, at least every other week or something, right? Yeah. And um, so for me, saying no to a social situation, that's really hard because I'm all like, yeah, let's go. Like, yes. I'm, I, if anyone's familiar with the Enneagram, I'm a seven. So experiences are everything I want to do. My biggest fear is literally FOMO. We fear on missing out on experiences. So, it, it, you know, 
it's hard for me to be like, no, I can't, I have to do something, you know? So I think sometimes I still struggle with that. Sometimes I delay certain projects because I'm like, wait, but I can go here. <laughs> right. You're right. So anyways, I've been doing it enough now to where I think it would be so cool if I could do this as a job or it would be so cool if I could do the product development job that I'm doing now, but in the vegan space, like maybe vegan handbags, and I wish I, I wish I had a remote job, right? This is in 2019 at this point. Remote jobs don't really exist unless you work in tech, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they're never going to have a remote, at least in retail. Like it's like very traditional, whatever. Well, a lot of my friends from the dance scene, et cetera, a lot of people noticed what I was doing with this booth thing. One day, one friend comes up to me. And she's like, hey, I'm going to do this English teaching program in Spain. She's like, you should apply. She's like, because you get to travel and I know you like to travel. I know you're in between the what you want to do and, and they'll pay you a monthly stipend. It's not a lot, but it's a livable salary over there. And it'll give you, you only have to work 15 hours a week. So you'll have tons of time to work on your YouTube channel while you figure out what you want to do next. And I was like, hold on. I, Cause I had, at this point I had already been to Europe quite a few times. I remember mm -hmm. Sorry, I moved my chair. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I think it would be amazing to live in Europe at least one year because I just love their lifestyle and just, just the way they live is completely different, right? Compared to the US. And I remember thinking, wait, am I really going to do this? Should I apply? It, you know, the stars were all aligning. My, I had just finished paying off all my student loans, right? my lease was about to be up and my roommate was going to move away. So I wasn't going to have a roommate. So I had to decide if I was going to stay living there by myself and pay the whole apartment or move somewhere else. And I didn't have anything time. Yeah. I wasn't in a relationship, nothing. Right. And I remember thinking, okay, am I going to leave this secure job that I've literally worked years for and went to school with for, so that I can live potentially like a college student again <laughs> on a thousand euros a month and just gallivant all around Europe. And I was like, you know what? Yes. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, this sounds like an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm employable. Worst case, I try out for a year and I come back and find another job, right? In some, well, I, maybe I could find something in a vegan for a vegan company or something, right? Um. So I applied the day of the deadline. That was the last day to apply. And I was like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I just applied, whatever, right? Um, uh, which, by the way, anybody who ever wants to live in Spain, I highly recommend that program. It's like a glorified vacation. It was great. I only worked three days a week. And I had four-day weekends, basically, every for almost two years. Um, but... What's it called? So I apply thinking, uh, I don't know. This was in April. I'm in July. I still haven't heard back. The program starts in September. Or sorry, in October, but you would have to be there in September if you got accepted, right? Oh, okay. And I'm like, Cutting it's off. July. Okay. Yeah, I was like, if I haven't heard yet, they didn't accept me. I gave me the office. I remember it was July 5th. It was the day after 4th of July, so after holiday. I had to check my email and I was like, Yudis, you've been accepted into the program or, and we've placed you in Valencia, Spain. I had applied to Madrid. Oh. Madrid. I had applied to Madrid but only because my friend was going to be there and it was like the biggest city. And, but I had been to Valencia the year before and I was like, this is even better because it's by the beach. Oh. And the perk of being placed in Valencia was because it's the third largest city they got paid the same as Madrid and Barcelona, but it had a lower cost of living. Ah. So my dollar was going to stretch a little more. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh. I remember thinking, being so excited. I was like, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> I was like, I'm so excited. I was like, I, I'm, I, I wasn't scared. It just felt right. Right. Yeah. And because at this point, Norsham was already reorging. Re so the structure kept changing. They were doing layoffs. It was so like, do I even want to work here anymore? I had already decided that I couldn't decide of any other role I wanted in the company. Mm. I, I was just like, I, I don't want my boss's job. They always look stressed out. They never take vacation, even though they make more money. 
So right. what's left for me here? I was like, I feel like I've done every job that I've ever wanted in this company. I don't think there's anything else to take that interests me, right? And I was like, well, I was like, let me just do this, right? And so I gave my team like a you know, two-month notice. I was like, I'll leave in September or the end of August or whatever. I think is why I said. So yeah, I worked there until the end of August. And then in September, I moved to Spain. Um, again, this is fall of 2019. Um, best six months of my life. And then, you know, we all know what happened in March 2020. <laughs> and, and but Jeez, in those six days. months, in those six months, I was still recording videos. I did video on Valencia. I was still using my iPhone. I had an iPhone 10 by this point. Oh, so I, was, I know. I upgraded, but still live. <laughs> um, so I was doing videos. I ended up doing a, uh, a video in Mallorca. I did it in Valencia. I did one in Paris, Barcelona, London, Istanbul. This is all in six months because, of course, Europe, right? Everything's so close and so cheap. It's, and so the one thing is I did, and I made sure to save up a lot of money before I went to Spain because the thousand euros a month was not going to cut it. I was like, no, I'm trying to be bougie, somewhat on a budget, but I want to be, you know, I don't want to have to be on a budget budget. Right. And so uh, thankfully this, you know, savings came through in there for that. But, you know, March 2020 happened. I ended up having to come back home uh, for six months during the state of alarm, thankfully. Um, that was another story. I was already out of the country. There's the, anyways, that's all another story for another day. But because I, I left all my stuff behind in Spain, I was like, well, I have to go back and get my stuff. And I had already renewed the program in case I wanted to do it again. So I ended up going back a second school year. The experience was a little different in that sense, in the sense that I couldn't leave the country because of COVID restrictions. You had to, there was even a point where you couldn't leave your community. So it was like yeah. almost like province. Yeah. So for like about three months, we couldn't, I couldn't leave this province of Valencia, which wow. is the equivalent, I think, from like, let's say Hollywood to Orange County or, mm. you know, or something. Um, and so there was still a lot to see, but during the winter months, it's a Mediterranean place. Like you're like, well, everything's cold here. Like, why do oh, I want to rage? Right. <laughs> but. I, you know, I still do, was doing videos on Spain and all that, whatever, right? So I still do. At this point, I'm panicking because I don't know where I'm going to get my job. I know this is my last year doing this program. I need a job now when I go back to the U.S. And I have no idea what that job is going to be. Um, and I, all I knew, I was like, God, I don't even know if this exists but I want to work something that's in the vegan space slash I want a remote job. I don't ever want to have to have a strict work hours again. Like I don't even know if this exists. Right. And I had the opportunity during that whole thing to go to New York. Right. That's a whole different story for a different reason. But the point is I went to New York and I decided at this point I had bought a camera for my friend. Um, and so this was my first video that I ever made on a digital camera on the, you know, and I didn't even know how to use it. So somehow I figured out how to really kind of use it while I did it. But I was so happy with that video because I got to interview all the owners of the restaurants that I filmed. I, um, what is it? I filmed it all behind the scenes. It was the, like four icon or like, I think it was five iconic foods you, you need to eat in New York, but vegan, right? Mm. Mind you, okay, sorry, let me rewind a little bit. The journey for you two has been rough ever since I started. The motivation of wanting to keep going was a struggle every single week. Never did I. This. Yes, sorry, I was like, I should have said this earlier. Girl, I need to hear this. I'm, I'm, I'm posting videos here, like it's my full time job. Meanwhile, I'm getting like 50 to 100 views. Okay. Yep. Nobody's watching these videos. Yep. So, well, again, what the heck am I doing with my life? Am I even, should I quit? And this right. is, I think, where it comes into play of like the past experiences I've had in my past jobs, where it's like, just because things are difficult doesn't mean you have to quit or doesn't, you know, doesn't mean you shouldn't keep going. That's right. 
because you you have to show up every day and be consistent and learn along the way, right? Hmm. So I am over here posting these videos, putting hours. You know how long it takes to edit a video. Putting sure. hours of work into a video. Yes. Post it. Nobody's watching it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, nobody can be like 100, 20 videos. Like, my channel's kind of growing, but I think it was like, at this point, my second year, how many? Maybe I had 1,000 subscribers by that point, which I mean, it's still a big deal. But it was just like, this isn't anything amazing yet, right? Um, and so... I remember one month, it was also in March, before the New York trip, because I couldn't travel. The restaurants weren't open because of COVID. There were still a lot of restrictions. So I was like, well, let me just post about recipes so people can learn how to make vegan food at home. And I remember being so unmotivated. Right. I know this is, this sucks. Like, why am I doing this? I want to quit. Okay. And I was like, trying to have, keep consistent with the one video a week because at this point I have a lot of time, right? And I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me, let me do something different. I was like, let me, I, I decided to kind of role model after the, her name is um, Nisha. She has Rainbow Plant Life. I love her channel. So I remember looking at one of her, I was like, you know what? I like her format. Let me try something new. So I decided to use her format, but I remember I decided, okay, I'm going to film about how are these mushroom tacos, because I miss eating tacos because I don't freaking have tacos in Spain. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to use my phone. I'm not going to make anything super fancy. I don't care. I'm going to put the lowest effort, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it look decent, but I'm not going to put an extra effort, right? And so I filmed this video. I edited it a different style. I had a really good thumbnail, though. I will admit that part was really good. The lighting that day was just really nice. <laughs> Anyways, but um, I upload that video, and it starts getting a lot of traction. It didn't go viral or anything, but actually, I should look up how many views it has now. I haven't even looked at it. But it was the first video that I noticed was like, oh, something's working. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was like god allowed me, like here here's a little bit of motivation that you need to just keep going right mm -hmm. yeah and i was like something's working people like this content and um it had been the video that got the most engagement and again it was and but i learned a lot through that because i was like okay it had to do with the keyword mushroom vegan vegan mushroom talk was apparently was something people were searching a lot the thumbnail was good you know so it was like all these things that um I had kind of just heard a lot in like different YouTube videos and podcasts and blah, blah, blah. It has 37,000 views now. Wow. Oh. But I mean, like, it's, oh my gosh, my hair, I'm let's look at this video right now. <laughs> oh, that was another thing. That day, I had a sty in my eye. What? That would not go away. So in this video, I freaking have this ugly sty, but I was like, I don't even care. I'm making this video anyways. Nothing's stopping me at this point. I love this. <laughs> so, and I, you have no idea. You are preaching to me. Oh my I God. need to hear this today. The moral of the story is don't go for perfection. Go for consistency and providing value to what people are looking for or to, to your audience. Provide value to your audience. They won't really care what the presentation looks like. You just you just show up, right? Wow. And... So that, thing, so that gave me a little more encouragement to just keep going. It was enough fuel literally to go a few more, you know, whatever. At this point, I go to New York, uh, film this video, come back. The reason for that, I guess I was like, I'll give the context for this because this is another low point in life at this moment, right? So I go to New York to meet up with the boyfriend I had at the time. No. Nope. Okay. We spend 10 days there. I come back to Spain. He breaks up with me over FaceTime. Ah! I know. This is a Stop it. grown, a grown man. Look at we're just with him. Girl, look at it. See I the was confetti, the balloons. Me. Hey, that's the, the celebration. You see that the celebration <laughs> from celebration. <laughs> balloons and confetti. We about to celebrate oh. that. Oh. I I remember being like shocked. And devastated because to this day, I don't know the real reason. He never gave me closure, whatever. Uh, he 
the way he approached it was very cowardly, but you know, as some men are. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> I whatever. I didn't fight it. I was like, that's fine. This is over. But of course, I was depressed. Cherry on top was apparently he gave me COVID because he got he got diagnosed with COVID. I had to go check. I was asymptomatic, but I had it. Mm. So I now had to quarantine 10 days with my feelings in my room, <laughs> in my little room, because my roommate at the time was, of course, freaking out. You know, like she was about to go to London to go see her family for the first time in seven years. Yeah, you weren't about to mess and that up for her. I didn't want to mess that up for her. And um, luckily, she was only in the apartment. Of, it was three days before she was about to leave. So at the remaining of my quarantine, I got to have a whole place to myself, which was nice. Yeah. But while I'm in this dark place, right, I'm in this dark moment of my life. I have nothing to do in this room. So I'm like, let me edit this New York video because I have nothing else to do. So what normally would take me like a week because, you know, I'm out going to do different things. I busted out this video in two days oh. because I needed something to distract me. I needed to keep myself busy. And I was like passionate about this because I was really in love with the content that I captured too, right? I was like, this is like really nice, you know, and I'm, I, at this point I've upgraded to Final Cut Pro for my editing, right? So I'm not doing iMovie anymore. I've, been, I've started to invest in myself. You know, I feel like, okay, I've already done this enough. Let me start more investing more because I think I'm going to do this for a long run now, right? A friend of mine, when I launched it, so I posted on YouTube, it starts doing pretty well. As soon as I post it, I was like, hey, it's working. You know, a friend of mine sees it. She's like, oh my gosh, you should post this to the Adventist YouTubers group on Facebook. And I'm like, okay. Wait, there is. I'm like, right. So then I was like, you know what, whatever, I could use the extra view. So let me just throw it on there, right? Okay. I, um, what is it? I post it within a day or two, I get this Facebook message being like, hey, my name is so-and-so. I work for a natural foods company. I just became president of this company and I love your video. We have been wanting to do more content marketing for this, con this company. We are rebranding and I think this is the angle we should go with. I would love to talk to you more about potentially working together. And I was like, <laughs> and I, that's what, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means because right. he literally had just taken over that company. It was a natural foods company. So it was like, think pantry staples. It's a, mind you, it's all a plant-based company because it's Adventist. It's an Adventist company. So um, it's, you know, pantry staples, like almonds, walnuts, grains, right? Everything, right? Um, and so he goes, let me, I need to talk to the board, but I will connect with you again once we have more information, okay? And I'm like, okay, so months go by and I'm always following up, like, hey, just, you know, wondering if you've gotten information because I still haven't found another job at this point, right? And um, he goes, oh, no, 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 let me get back to you. Finally, May 31st comes around. We have, and the reason I bring up the days is because of this, because like, sorry, I'm like noticing I have eyeliner that's dripping. Um, so she, we get on a video call and he's like, all right, I finally was able to work out everything with the board and whatever. I've hired this whole team, basically cut it. The company's country life natural foods. They're based out of Michigan, Pullman, Michigan. They were basically going through a whole rebrand. They needed to change up their website. They needed new packaging. They needed new content. They needed social media. They had nothing. Think old Midwest country store now needs to go modern right? Th this is what happened. So he, he initially wanted to hire me to do a, a series where Country Life Foods would be the sponsor of the video where I showcase what vegan food looks like in Portland, because I was going to go back to Portland, right? And then talk about how, by the way, if you're interested in making cashew cheese at home, you can buy cashews from Country Life Natural Foods, you know, whatever, right? That was the idea. But what, during our conversation, when I told him what I used to do at Nordstrom, he was like, actually, we could use someone like you. We need someone to take over our project management of like the whole packaging side of things. Would you like to come on board with us and work like basically full time? Full time, I say full time in quotations because I was technically 1099, so I was self-employed, but I got a full time salary kind of thing, right? And I was like, yes. And he's like, but in terms of schedule and flexibility, this is gonna be 100% remote. He was like, 
as long as you get your stuff done, it's okay. He was like, we just, as long as you get your projects done, we're fine. We're flexible. If you want to go travel, you just let me know. I, he's like, I believe in unlimited PTO. <laughs> and I was just like, Mike Joy, hey, man. Can we just, <laughs> praise God. Can we just shout out to the unlimited PTO? Can this just unlimited be PTO. a and regular? So it was almost like, exactly. It was almost like startup culture. And it was, I, my, literally my jaw dropped because I was like, this is literally everything I've been looking for, a job that I didn't think even existed. And God, and God literally just handed it to me on a silver platter. And then I told my mom and I was like so excited. I called my mom and my mom's like, she was like, isn't it crazy how this happened today, March 31st, and this is the last day of your school contract. The minute you're la like, that was the end of my school year in Spain as my, as the English teacher, that was ending and I had just gotten my new role the same day. I know, I was like, <laughs> don't talk to me about God's timing, okay? Like, right. don't, even, don't even tell me he don't keep things on time. Right. I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was like, more right. I know. So, uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's how I ended up working for Country Life Natural Foods for two years. I do have the Portland series of different, we filmed, that was so much fun. That was like my little insight to what a potential show could one day look like because mm. I hired my friend that I, I made, I ended up becoming really good friends with a, someone who was also from Portland, who's also a videographer. So we hired him to be the videographer and we hired somebody else that did the, the editing, but I was the producer in that sense, right? I had to come up with a framework, who was gonna be filmed. How, again, this is where the project management comes to play because I need to connect with the restaurants. I needed to write out what this, the, the framework for the, the B-roll and the voiceover, what does it all look like? How is it gonna be timed? Da, 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 da. What am I gonna film? How am I gonna talk, you know? Um, so I was managing all these different parts, even though I was the one that was gonna be in front of the camera. And um, the series did really well. Like if uh, with my affiliate code, like, and I, maybe this could be a combination of a bunch of different things, but I feel like a big chunk of it is from the video. I helped generate $12,000 for that company through that affiliate code. Wow. Yeah. So at least they made their money back. <laughs> Cause at first I was worried. I was like, oh my gosh, like they're just taking a chance because at the time, well, that was the other thing. Don't underestimate, you know, at the end of the, you know, it's one of those times where it's like, God will qualify you even when you don't feel qualified. I think at the time I had 2,000 followers on, 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. I don't even know if I had 1,000 on Instagram. I couldn't remember my numbers. But my, the point is, it was not a high number that I had maybe, or maybe it was 4,000. I don't remember. It was not, it wasn't even 5,000 on YouTube, okay? It was less than 5K on YouTube. But somehow they thought you'd be great. Let's pay you money and do this sponsorship series for our company because of what you've already done, your portfolio that's already on YouTube, right? They, they saw the work that I did before and they're like, yeah, this is worthy. Even though in my head, I was like, no, but I'm not like this big YouTuber. I don't have all this experience, you know, but they thought it was good enough, right? And yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like, again, it's like when you just keep showing up, even when you don't even believe in yourself, it's almost like God lighting a path for you being like, well, you know what? You're going to have to just try anyways. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. So, you know. I needed to hear that. Yes. I needed to hear that. All those that. times, if anyone ever feels discouraged, that's normal. My account has grown significantly. Ask me if I still feel discouraged. A lot. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. But now I'm to the point of like, well, I've come this far. Am I really just going to just, you know, I feel like I'm running a marathon. I'm on mile 23. Or what is it? It's 23 or 26 miles. It's 26, right? 26. 26. 
I'm a mile 23 and I'm sitting here like, I just want to sit down at this point. I'm tired. I ran 23 miles. But yeah, I'm like, well, I got three left. Even if I'm literally in like struggling or in pain, I might as well finish. Right. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I, at this point, you just got to keep going. Yeah. 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 Girl. Let me pause for a second because. Yeah. I've talked to you about this journey from for myself and how I've had to just get used to feeling crazy. Oh, yeah. And looking crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, the you went through all this school and you had the student loans and you became a doctor and la, 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 and you had the pharmacist salary and, and you just left it all to do what? Like... Oh, you know, let's not even forget that I have immigrant parents who literally risk their lives thank to you. come to this country. Thank you. And I'm over here being like, I'd like to live a dream. You oh, know? right. Forget the stable job. Oh, right. So the guilt that comes with that, too, Girl. is a whole nother level of, of things. That yeah. part. Same. It's like the immigrant parents who, I mean, anyone watching this that has immigrant parents. You already know that you know you can quote their story in your sleep of how they came here, what it took to get here, what happened when they got here, all the sacrifices that they made. And here you are trying to rough it. That we did that already. That's not your job. We literally fought t- tooth and nail, sweat, blood, tears so that you won't have to rough it. What are you doing to everything we put in to this, the soil? Like, yes, what is happening? And so, girl, I'm, I really, really, I needed to hear your story from, from Nordstrom. I needed to hear this because this whole idea of people just value you even before you can see it because the metrics aren't lining up, Mm -hmm. right? Like you start questioning, like I've been at this for a year, two years, four years, seven years. You're like, am I insane? Was everyone right? Like maybe I should just go back and do Mm -hmm. the nine to five. just go back and do all this stuff. And yet you have that vision. You're like, but I, I see, I see it. I don't see all the steps of how to get to it but it's it's there like it keeps pressing in my mind so i i gotta at least try and it is discouraging it is discouraging to feel like you're not making as much progress as maybe you wanted to or you're watching other people make this progress and you're like when am I going to do that? Not realizing that, like you, like I didn't know you started off all the way back in Nordstrom in 2010 for you to even figure this out. That That's 14 years, like to now, of like all the things that you were learning along the way to get to, you know, the 2021, 2022 of like, oh, things are just now really picking up traction. And you saw like, glimmers of things in all these different transitional periods that were pointing towards that but it didn't mean that every step that you were taking that everything was just an exponential Mm -hmm. climb more like (laughs) girl (laughs) yeah just all over and so i i'm thank you for for talking to me about this because, again, we have sat down and I've been like, <laughs> like, like, what am I? I feel like no. I'm making it up. All these little yes. Gen Zers are on no. TikTok making things in, in the middle of second period. And by third period, it's viral. And I'm at home in my 30s. You're like, ain't no, and you're in I've met an algorithm. Yeah, 23, 25 year olds making six figures on social media. I'm like, what have I done with my life? What am I doing? 
What is going right. on? Right. Do it. I know. Oh and my, my parents God. are also going, yeah, no, really, what are you doing? <laughs> let, 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 let's actually no, talk about that. I'm letting you. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Huh? Oh, my oh word. My so I just had, I had to pause for a second because yes. I, I, like, I need that to sit in my brain because motivation will never drive me. It won't. I have to be determined because there's days I'm not motivated to even get out of bed. Yes. I mm-hmm. need to be determined to reach the picture that stays in my mind all the time. And I want to see it in real life. I think that's what drives me to be like, you know, can okay, just get out of bed. Like, just do it. Just go yeah. turn on the camera, go do this or go on to Instagram and make this video. Just do it because the the vision will not leave my mind. And I'm so curious about what it would look like in real life that yes. I want to go see it. I want to keep trying to see it in yes. real life because I'm waiting for that like, <sighs> This is what I was thinking about. This is what I was seeing. I'm so glad other people can now see it. Mm Because I was feeling crazy, feeling like I'm the only one in here seeing this thing. And people were like, oh, hey. Like, you know. I love that you said that. You have to remember your why and your vision because there will be multiple days that you will not feel motivated. Girl. Multiple. And you just have to get up. And do it anyway. Yeah. You know, you have to just show up, do something, right? Because it was, I think I remember listening to a podcast interview with um, Tyler Perry. And he was saying, there's some things that if you just can't shake it, there's a dream or a vision you have. And you cannot, no matter how much you try to let go of and say, I'm going to quit. You can't stop thinking about it. You can't shake it. That usually means that that's something God has placed in your heart. And you just got to see it through. And I, it's to the point where it's almost like, why well, do I have to keep, I can't stop thinking about it, but I wish I could stop thinking about it because I, when, the, when I do want to give up, I actually can't. As me, mm. when I'm so frustrated and want to give up, I can't. Yeah. And it's so annoying. Girl. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, wait. Girl. Why? Girl. Oh, no, my Girl, God. Girl, even the number of times that, like, I knew, got, from the time from the time God told me to start a podcast, he was like, I want you to do video. That was 2020. Yes. 2019, yeah. 2020. And I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't even know how to record audio. Yeah. I, hey, I don't know how to edit anything. I'm a yeah. pharmacist, Lord. Can we start <laughs> basic? Like, can we build up to, you know, a video? Let's just start with, yeah. Um, garage band because I had that. I've never really used it except for a few little, you know, playing around things yeah. on there. But like, I know where you know to play. Uh, I know where the record button is. I know where the stop button is. Can we start there? And he's like, you know, that's fine. But when I tell you, it's like the persistence. Like, so are we gonna do the video podcast now? Are you gonna do the video podcast? Are you ready to do the video podcast, Candice? Let's do the video podcast. And I'm like, I think know it. We're going to just do it. I don't, I feel, I feel ready enough, but I don't feel ready, ready. Does that make sense? Like, I was just like, you just only need to feel ready enough. You will never feel ready, ready. Even if you get to a point where you felt ready, ready about something, there's going to be a new thing that you do not feel ready, ready about. Thank well, you just got what's there to not feel ready about. It's like, I didn't even know I look over here and I know I'm not ready right. about, for that. What is right. that? I know. You know, the interesting thing is it, my sophomore year of college, I took my first nutrition class and I remember being so fascinated. I fell in love with that class to the point where I was like, should I change my major? And I was mm-hmm. like, nah, I'm already, I've already gone a full year into business and I don't want to be a dietitian anyways and tell people what to eat. <laughs> like I thought that was the only job you can get as a, as a nutritionist. But never did I pray, like, should I do this? Nothing. And it's funny because now after Norseman, I was like, you know what? God loves us so much and cares about us. Even though I had the heart posture of like, God, this is what I want to do. And this is where I'm going to be. And this is, you know, I want to work at corporate Norseman, blah, blah, blah. Even though he knew 
you're not going to like it when you get there. Like you're going to like it enough, but you're not going to like be so passionate about it. Like you think you are. Right. But he, he still got me there because he loves us. Right. Because he loves me. He's like, no, I'm still going to get you to your dream goal. Yeah. And I had the, he knew I was going to find out on my own that like, oh, I don't think I want this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now after, I remember after leaving North Shore, my, my, posture for prayer was like, God, what is your dream job for my life? Whatever that is, I'll do it. I was like, because I know I'm going to like it anyways. Right? right. And I've learned so much. I mean, and learned, and not that it's perfect yet, but I've learned more how to surrender and just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Because again, since I was in high school, early college, I had a plan. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I know how the year, you know what I mean? Like I just knew what I wanted to achieve. And now I'm kind of like, well, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm still going to show up, but I'm just going to go with the flow. <laughs> and has not been an easy transition. Let me tell you that much. Here like, oh, I guess I can, I don't know if you have any more questions. I was like, I'm finish up my little story. Because no, girl. Finish up your story. I'm just okay. marinating. I'm just marinating <laughs> in all of it. So, I go back to Portland after Spain. Back home, that's where my parents live. Because I'm at this point, I'm like, I got nowhere to live, and I need to save up all my savings again because I used it all because of COVID. No, was, I wasn't working those two years, right? Right. Well, thankfully, hashtag gay Latino family. We all live at home, so it's fine. <laughs> Immigrant life. They actually yes. let you come back home. They let you come back home. In fact, they want you to come back home. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, so I remember being so upset. That I had to even, I remember thinking, okay, because I don't, I, I grew up in Portland. I've never been a fan of living in Portland. I told myself, no, I don't want to live there for a long time. I'm just going to go back home for six months, save money, leave somewhere, right? No. So I go back and I remember trying to escape and going, I remember even thinking of short term living in Miami for a bit. And then I remember I just thought, okay, you know what, Eunice? I know you won't like it, but this is a really good growing experience and it'll allow you to save as much money as possible. And you will have, it'll force you to just keep growing and working on your channel while you still have another full-time job, right? Um, and I'm like, okay, whatever. At this point, I meet a friend. Her name's Ashley. Oh, shout out to Ashley. Her handle is Vegan Ventures. She's in Portland. She's great. Oh, the funny thing, we went to the same university. We were actually in a fashion show together. We recognized each other on, I saw one of her videos pop up and I was like, I know this girl. How, where do I know this girl? Turns out five years later, what happened to be 10 years later or whatever. She has also now gone vegan. She also worked in retail, decided to quit and go traveling. So fast forward to 10 years later, we now have so much in common and she's also doing content creation. So the reason I bring her up is find someone who's going on the similar journey with you because that is going to be your support. There's something about being able to talk to somebody about what you're going through and having them understand that will just that will just help help you through the hard times. They will literally be your support because a lot of entrepreneurs often think that they're on their own, they're doing it on their own, they're the only ones taking this risk. No, find yourself that friend or support and be as vulnerable as you can with them because most likely they're going through it also. So meeting her for that year and a half was a godsend. Like we're still really good friends um, and we were both in it together. So we were able to talk to each other like, I'm going through this, yeah, me too, I'm thinking this, I also wanna give up. We would always help, there was days where I was like, I don't wanna do this anymore and she would talk me out of it and she would come the days, I don't wanna do this anymore. I'd be like, no, Ashley, you've come so far, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, you know, we were just there to support each other. Um, Finally, I have enough savings to figure out where, where I want to live. It is now like October of 2022 and I get recognized in this small little film festival um, in LA called the Awareness Film Festival. I had submitted one of my videos about vegan in Mexico City and I, I won the, one, of the, one of the categories and they were going to display it on a big screen. Nobody knows what this festival okay, is, but for me, it was a big deal because I was like, who cares? My video is going to be on a big theater screen. So I was like, let me go, right? And it'll be an excuse for me to go visit my cousin in LA. So I go and um, I, th that weekend, it's a Friday. 
I drive around, my friend, our friend JR notices I'm in LA and he goes, hey, you should come to this thing called Gather tonight. Uh, and he's like, they, it's like a Vesper thing, but they have it at a cafe, it's in downtown. Yeah, mind you, me and my cousin were already downtown, so it worked out perfect. Had we been somewhere else, we would have never gone. But because we're already there and we're like, all right, like, let's, let's go. Why not? I was like, and I was intrigued already by the fact that it was at a cafe and not a church. And I, at the time, context also, in Portland, I was struggling to connect with a faith-based community of people my age, people, mm. with, you know, of like my background where, I, you know, it was just, I don't know. I had, I had a really strong community in Seattle, but then when I came back to Portland, I never had that. The people that were kind of doing were like almost an hour away. Mind you, this is when I lived in Portland. Like to me now, now li driving an hour is normal. Back then it was not. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so I was like, okay, sure. I show up to gather and I remember being so pleasantly surprised to see the amount of people that were there. Number one, it was out in a cute patio with a taco guy making tacos. And I was like, this is already cool. I hate that I just ate. <laughs> But what? I think we ate again. I mean, we had literally just eaten. We're like, I want to try one of these tacos. <laughs> okay. And then, then there were so many people, like the young professionals, our age, diverse backgrounds, ethnicities. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is what I've been searching for. Yeah. But I was like, well, this is nice. Whatever, right? So we have gather. We have our Bible study, everything. And I prayer request time comes. And, and you know, they ask me if I have any prayer requests. And I go, yeah, you guys. And like, trying to figure out where I want to move. Uh, and like, um, I just want a place with sunshine, somewhere that can help it, where I can have a faith-based community, somewhere where, you know, I feel like I can grow with my content creation, whatever, right? And JR literally looks at me, it's like, so why aren't you moving here? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I was like, LA. And for my, but the minute he said that, I was like, he, it was like, I don't know what it was. It was like a shock, you know, this feeling of like, it was a click. I was like, he's right. I need right. to leave here. Yeah. Everything just made sense, even though I tried to fight it because at that same time, Spain announced the digital nomad visa. I love Spain. Okay. I would love to live there again, part-time at home, at least. The they digital announced nomad visa. Yeah. It's this basically where if you have a remote job, which I still did with Country Life, you are able to work remotely and... You, they give you the visa to live there and then you make your money abroad. Oh. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is like a dream come true. I was like, I get to live in Spain, make US money. It's the best of both worlds. But I remember it, there was something in the back of my head being like, no, you actually need to move to LA. And I just said, I was like, no. I was like, why? LA is expensive. It's dirty. I have to drive around everywhere. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, it was all these things, right? And then um, my boss for a country at the time, he was kind enough to even do a pros and cons list with me. He was like, let me, because I, I was like struggling with, I was like, I don't know what to do. He was like, he's like, I get what you mean. He's like, okay. So I did this pros and cons. He goes, look, money aside, assuming money wasn't an issue, which one would you be willing to try for at least a year? And I said, LA. And he goes, yeah, I think you should do that. He's like, it sounds like you're mostly worried about how it's expensive or whatever. He's like, but let me tell you something. Community is everything. Wherever you have community, that's where you'll be the happiest, right? And at the time in Spain, I wasn't really going to church that much. Not because they didn't have one, but it's just, I, this community didn't feel strong enough. And I was just like, I was unmotivated to go to church. Like I just, didn't want to go. And so then, and also it made sense. Of, and like from a business perspective, I knew Europe, Spain in particular also doesn't have the money to pay people for content creation. At this point and the stage, I was at like 5,000 followers. People were starting to gain interest of like, let me pay you for a little thing here. Right. It wasn't a lot, but they were starting. And then Europe, they don't really pay you. They have low, you know, they don't have as much money in the U S and the U S they see them. They're more, you know, in the business mindset. Yeah. of like, they see the value, right? And I knew if, if, if I really want to, so I really want to grow ready to be as a business, there's no better city to do it than Los Angeles. 
I was like, this is, this is the city. And especially because in my dream is still to one day have a show. I don't know yeah. how I'm going to get there, but that's still a dream. And yeah. I was like, it definitely makes sense to go to Los Angeles if that's the case, right? right. I don't know how it's even going to happen, but it just makes sense. This is where yeah. they make TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was, I was like, okay. So I, fast forward, whatever, I moved to LA, still don't know what I'm doing here. Don't even know if I made the right decision. Thank God, like, I had everything I needed, the savings, stuff, like, whatever. I found a place. I make a really, you know, connect with the community here. I start posting about Los Angeles restaurants because, you know, I need to introduce myself as a content creator here, right? Um, and you'll remember this, Candice, around 7,000 followers, my account got right. hacked. <laughs> That's right. So all of those years that I had put into creating this Instagram account, gone in Girl. minutes. Girl, I was sad for you. I was angry I, for you. I was just low. <laughs> that was stressful. That was stressful. Yeah. Because I didn't know how long it was then. To, I didn't know if I was ever going to get my account back. I didn't know at this point, now it makes sense to quit. I mean, I have YouTube, but I was like, well, I guess I'll keep YouTube, but Instagram, whatever, right? I was like, I don't know what to do. People would tell me like, oh, sometimes you get it in a month, sometimes you never get it back. Thankfully, one of my friends from church in Seattle worked for Meta. He put in a ticket for me. Within a week, I had my account back. But that little wilderness moment where I, I basically had to remind myself why I started that account in the first place. I had to remember my why, because it's so easy to get wrapped up in the numbers, the likes, the views, because my account was already starting to get some traction. Like some videos were doing really well. I was, I was, I had just announced I was doing a giveaway for 7K because I literally had just reached 7K, which I think is interesting that the fact that my account got hacked at seven, but you know, that's a difference. Yeah. But I know, <laughs> right? I didn't think about that. I was like, mm. Yeah. Ooh, they're not ready for it. They're right. not ready for the conversation, girl. <laughs> and so then I was like, okay. But I remember I didn't know when my, my account was going to come back, but I remember it was a Saturday afternoon. I was like, I'm just going to record a video, a YouTube video and keep it raw and talk about my why, why I started. Let's talk about my story. I have it on YouTube still, right? Because it it's a long video. It's like almost 30 minutes, I think where I'm talking about why I even started your know, YouTube channel, why I started my Instagram, what I have, what my goal is and my dreams are and what I want to achieve, which is essentially I want to just excite people about a vegan lifestyle. I want to show them that it's fun. I want to show that it's healthy or not. It's not restrictive. It's more about what you're gaining in life. Right. right? right. And um, so I post that video. That was a Saturday, whatever. And then the, on Tuesday, that next week I got my comeback and one year later, my account tripled in size. Exactly. I remember looking at like at May again of this year, it was at like 21K and now it's at almost 30K. The shock for me is, oh my goodness, look at what can happen in one year. Yeah. In one year. Yeah. Like one minute, I think it's over. The next minute, it's nowhere where you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You were way true. ahead of what even you, I would have never even bet that much on myself. Right. You know, like the most exponential growth I've ever had happened in one year. And I truly think it's because I've been placed in this environment that, you know, it's like when you put a plant in the right soil and the right, you know, mm. sunshine and water and everything, it's going to bloom to its fullest potential. Yeah. Put a palm tree in Portland, it's not really going to grow. <laughs> <You Chum. know? laughs> and, and so, yeah, here we are today. It's, I'm still on the journey, still trying to figure this thing out. But all I learned around this whole journey is that God does not forget about you. He okay. sees you. He's right there next to you, even when you feel like he's not. Mm. Even when you feel like you're in this all by yourself, you are not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, and then in terms of, this isn't a show, but now my videos that I've created that have been on YouTube have been licensed and are now on two streaming platforms. One's a vegan streaming platform and the other one's a Latino streaming platform called Avenida Productions, where it's all Latino filmmakers. Some great films on there, but my videos made the cut. And I was like, okay, I was like, listen, I know I use a camera now, but I was like, they're by no means. I'm like, crying. Crying <laughs> enough to anymore, guys. And then I also won a Taste Award, which is like the Oscars of food and lifestyle. Oh, there is the confetti again. <laughs> See? Celebration, girl. Celebration. And to me, like, that's we like, I'm still, I don't think I've come into full realization because I feel like I, there's a part of me that still feels unworthy of it. Mm. But also, it, it, that's some, it's almost like recognition. For me, I see it as recognition for all the work I've put in up until now. Yeah. But me showing up is now being displayed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For others. And I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm still struggling. I still, I, I am truly confident that I did not make the wrong decision in leaving Norch. I feel like God is leading me, but I still don't know where and I don't know how. And there's still times where I just break down and cry. <laughs> Girl. You know, so don't be discouraged. If you have that dream, it's not going to be easy, but you can do it. Is there... Is there anything that you would have done differently if you had gone back at any certain points in the trajectory of everything? For sure, I would have done coaching earlier on for YouTube. I think mm. when you're starting, I think, at least for me, I had this scarcity mindset where I didn't want to let go of any of my, the money that I had or anything to invest in myself. I was too afraid to invest in myself, right. thinking, no, what if it doesn't work? Or what if this is going to teach me? I tried to figure it out on my own, but yeah. it took longer. I still feel like there's things I could learn, but I was like, that would have catapulted me so much faster, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I think not being afraid to invest in yourself and take a bet on yourself yeah. is something that I would have done differently. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. Um, you know, hearing your, hearing your story for myself, um, I think I said this with you when we had dinner a couple weeks ago, but like this idea that I feel like I'm getting to the second or third grade of whatever this is, what this journey is, um, you know, looking, looking back on aspects of my childhood, even, you know, um, seeing how people picked up on how animated I was and how I'm really good at being on stage and I was always stealing the show and never used school play you know I had like small roles and um I was being asked to speak in spaces I didn't understand like why they would consider me so like I remember in my eighth grade year there was a junior or senior in the high school that would come and speak to the eighth graders about high school and mm -hmm. it was always like every year the eighth graders look forward to hearing what the high schooler has to say about going to high school and what it's right. like and encouragement um but then i got to ninth grade so i've only been in high school for like four months right five months and they were like Candace, we think you can do it. I was like, I just got here. What are you talking about? Right. I have nothing to say. Like, I'm still yeah. crying. I'm, you know, my brother had gone to boarding school. So I'm like, I'm missing him. And I'm trying to navigate high school without him. Like, sad. And then, like, I'm just trying to navigate life. I, don't, I still get lost going to class. Like, it's a lot. And they're like, no, like, it's how you speak. I think you would be able to motivate eighth graders 
that are literally about to just go into ninth grade of mm -hmm. like that they can do it right even though it's hard it's totally new and all this stuff and i was like where did you pick up on that from like i'm <laughs> i'm confused I'm, i don't know why you thought that what was i doing in eighth grade that made you think that i was i was in a school play i don't think that's like the the reason like so i had all these questions and they were like trust us like we really think you can do it so 14 15 year old me i go and do my first talk ever and i loved it right but i was still scared you know like i'm scared i'm like oh my gosh like i loved it but then like i don't know it's just like that moment and maybe it's like that one time yeah. you know and so like you i look back and i see all these little seasons where i'm wrestling between the immigrant stream for their child and like you're gonna do this and something in me that's like you're gonna be on stages you're gonna be doing talks you're gonna be performing you're gonna create content you're gonna produce movies and talk shows and tv shows and and you're like you're gonna do all these things all the way to my brother kevin my older brother he would introduce his introduced me to his friends as the female will smith i don't know where he got that from i had not heard it until i met his friends and they were like he always talks about you being the female will smith and i was like <laughs> really that is so well, i mean honored that's an and amazing a compliment yeah i love that um and he and so they would explain what he would say be based off of that um and his whole thing was like she's so good at just being funny off the cuff and you're like where in the world does she get this humor from like she's so quick with her her humor and i thought that was interesting because i secretly as a, even though i was studying science i was in my room studying will smith i was studying betty white i was studying i was even watching kev on stage when he was like in his under a thousand subscribers time like i had randomly found him as this comedian on youtube and i would do that in private in my dorm room because i'm like it's maybe it's just something i enjoy but i really felt like i was studying what they were doing i was like i feel like i have that quick wit where they can say will smith um is in a scene with carlton banks and ad lib like go and the rest of the cast they'll have scripts but you won't go and i learned betty white was doing the same thing and how she would just make up stories about saying a lot and, all. and so i'm like studying this realizing like i feel like i can do things like this but i'm about to be a doctor like it's like so random right so you know still going to school still studying science still going to pharmacy school, still getting the PharmD, going to get my master's in public health, all these little things that I really felt like God was leading me to do. Um, and then him just being like, you're not doing that anymore. I leave, I'm home. Then he's like, you're going to LA. And I'm like, I've never wanted to go to California in my life. So why are you doing that? But fine. And I get here and it's amazing. It still feels so, I, I feel like a baby giraffe. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. I feel like a baby <laughs> giraffe trying to stand. And even though I hear people encouraging me like you and telling me like, I, I see it. I see it in you. I've seen it through you. I've seen what you can do. You've got this. Just keep going. It's that day to day that is like, are y'all sure? Like, I'm, I don't even think it's about saving face. I mm -hmm. think at one point I almost felt like that because like I made this grand exit from pharmacy and it's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm doing this new thing. And it's like, well, what if it was all a flop and I end up going to pharmacy and I look like an idiot. But I, I think that day-to-day -day encouragement or the day-to-day -day remembering that why and talking to people, hearing from people that are, that they understand that it really actually is a long game. Because mm -hmm. like for me, I, I, I saw you and you're like, I didn't know like 
all of that backstory. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so she just started like around the time, like me, like going on social media and she's doing this and like, she's like blown up and I'm going like, no, she started at Nordstrom. You just started at Nordstrom <laughs> in 2010. And you're like, like, yeah, when you met me, the tip of the ice for bird was coming out of the water. Girl. So we, like what people don't see is that whole chunk There's of ice so is so under the sea. So much. But he just has to keep going, keep going. Yes. Yes. And I think that's the other thing too, is like to remember that you kind of have to be okay with the unknown and God wants us to lean on him and not on our own understanding and not on our own strength. Yeah. Because if you only rely on your own strength, you're not going to be able to achieve the impossible. Right. Right. And that's hard too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Chapstick. (laughs) Oh, girl, you okay? Um, (laughs) I, I think it's one thing when your immigrant parents were like the first in their families to come to America and like do all these things. I think as a child of immigrants, I assumed that any firsts that I have would be directly built off of what they did. So it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, okay, to be fair, I was the first pharmacist. We have a lot of doctors in my family, but I was the first to do pharmacy. Why was I able to do that? Because my parents were able to come here and practice medicine, you know, so they had insights on things that they could teach me before you know I try to pursue anything in medicine so I had that but like I assumed like first would also be like um the first in the family to start my own like hospital like you know like something within the context of what they already did yeah so to be in a creative space that they don't they don't understand it. They have a kind of a context a little bit now that Kevin has been through pentatonics and whatnot. But mm-hmm. even still, what I'm doing is very different from what Kevin did and has done and is doing and will continue to do. So there's still this kind of like, oh, I don't even know how to explain to people what you do. I don't know what oh. to call it. Right. Don't even get me started when I fish, when I when I left Country Life because they were doing downside budget cuts. You, the last thing I wanted to do was get into a social networking situation. But so, what do you do? I was just like, like great contact. Like I hated, I hated telling people what I did because I felt like I wasn't doing enough or something. Right. It's yeah. and that's the thing with like also with there's no structure in this creative space i mean there is structure but there's no like there's no rules is what i need to say there's right. no rules in this creative space it's all different across the board right so at the end of the day it's kind of like telling people what you want to already achieve or something you know what i mean like you motivate people and you're great at speaking i mean if i were to introduce you i'd be like she's a motivational speaker she's good <laughs> You know, yeah. but I get it. I get it because it's like, oh, what do I tell people that I do? Because I still struggle with it too. Right. It's like, yeah. like, what, like, what is that? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm still, I'm figuring right. it out. Anytime someone asks, like, how's your business going? I'm like, can we not talk about that? Like, I, I that's the yeah. last question I want you to ask me. That I don't right. want to think about it. Um, because... I think also for me, because it started like a calling, like I wasn't yes. running to go find it. It was like mm-hmm. the Lord presented it to me and I was like, oh, and he's like, uh-huh, like, you, do you want to you wanna do it? And so <laughs> I was like, I mean, why not? You know, so it wasn't, it was something that was yearning in my heart that I didn't believe I was allowed to do because of the immigrant story. It's like, mm-hmm. these will be like maybe hobbies or like little interests, but it's not something that God's going to pour into as a purpose for my life. Like the, right. 
No, that's not stable, right? It's not stable, yeah. which is right. what immigrant parents are looking for because they that's live all such they an want unstable yes. experience. They want they want to set a stable foundation so their children don't have to know what the struggle feels like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't go running towards this. I didn't go finding it as in, as intensely as it felt in my spirit too because I didn't feel like I was allowed to. And mm -hmm. once God gave me that green light, I was like, I'm going all in. Like he said it, I'm doing it. I feel crazy. I don't even care that I feel crazy. I'm just going to do it. And the tears that have come with that, the, the qu questioning my questioning what my, like, how, how do I view value? Mm -hmm. That question has come up because we're taught that, you know, what you do is your value, mm -hmm. what your career is, is your value, the legacy How much you leave made. in your career, your, the money you make, those are all right. the values put on you. And so even like education, like what you studied, where you graduated from, what degree you got from that place, like all of these things, especially from the immigrant mindset. Mm -hmm. are so monumental to the value of a person that for God to be like, you're not going to get another degree and you're not going to practice pharmacy anymore. It was like, you're ripping out value and identity from me mm -hmm. only for him to be like, well, when you were born, you were Candace. Like you're a Candace. So who is that? And that's where I really I had to sit with like, oh, I've had enough from before I had degrees, education, all of that. And now that I'm learning how to see that value, how do I now gift it through what he's telling me to do? Like, well, how do I share that? Because the vision in my head entails that sharing of me and it encouraging other people to share of themselves and it helps mm -hmm. unlock mm -hmm. things in us that we didn't realize were there to even consider, to process, to look at differently. So if you were to, you know, and all these little transitions that you've gone through and technically you're still going through. Like this has been mm -hmm. a season of multiple transitions that have led you from that little girl in Nordstrom trying to learn how to sell shoes to <laughs> being able to, I don't want to call it like selling you, but it's like the selling mm -hmm. the value, like the value mm -hmm. of what, brings joy to your life um what what do you say to that person who's like in their in their Nordstrom time and in their you know random opportunity pops up what do I do I'm, I'm questioning or they've had even the I went from 7,000 to 30,000 in such a short amount of time when I wasn't mm -hmm. getting that before like mm -hmm. what what would you say to encourage people in all those different, uncomfortable, shocking, very questionable moments of their transitions? Oh, man. Yeah, I would definitely say again to just remember your why. Because again, if when something difficult happens, it's so easy to want to just quit or stop. Yeah. So the why is so important. I'm always telling people, don't do it for the likes. Don't you dare do it for the views because that is the least amount of the motivation you're going to need, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just doing it for that, you're going to fail so fast because it's, mm -hmm. it's not going to come quickly. For some people, it does, right? And good for them. Some people, they go viral in the first five videos and then have this count that's blowing up. And I'm like, oh man, I was like, look at you. Because <laughs> there is a science to it too. So like, I would say you know, just remember why you're doing it and surround yourself 
with people who support you and believe in you. Because sometimes these people are going to believe in you more than you believe in yourself, and you're going to need that. And also, don't be, if, you know, and if you have a faith background, if you believe in God, like prayer is everything. Also for me, that's helped me so much in believing that there's a higher power that can help guide me during those situations where I just feel stuck, where I feel like I actually don't know what to do right now, right? And the other thing is to just show up. You have to show up every day for yourself. Just keep going, even when it's not easy. You know, you don't feel like working out, do one push-up. <laughs> That's it. Think about it in small, like I've heard this thing like, uh, the, you know, it's, but no, what is that? What is Basically, you do things in small increments. Mm. It's okay to yeah. do things. So sometimes we intimidate ourselves with the, well, I want to get into shape. That means I have to go to gym for an hour. No, what if you only worked out five minutes a day? That's what you started with. It's okay. So that's like just showing up. Maybe you don't know about editing videos. Just look up one video, one YouTube tutorial, how to edit, you know, a video. That's it. That's your, oh, that's how you show up today, right? Make it bite-sized increments so where you don't overwhelm yourself. Because when you're overwhelmed, you're just, you're, you're going to, you know, analysis paralysis, right? You're just like, ah, I don't know what to do. But, um... So yeah, that would be my advice is just to be consistent. Be consistent, keep going, keep your eye on the prize, on your why. And just sometimes you have to put blinders on, but find your community, find people that you can surround yourself with. Either it's mentorship, look for people who are already doing what you wanna do, ask them questions, um, help people that are learning what you've already learned, right? I'm finding myself now teaching things like, oh my gosh, like I just want to share what I've learned because I can empathize with them so much. It's like, I remember being where you are. I remember, you know? And it's just like, you ha you can't help but want to help them because, you know, because you, you wish you had had that help when you were there, right? So, so yeah, that's, that's what I would say. And you have been a, testament of that to me um you know just I will I don't think I will ever forget meeting you because when when we met at gather last year see now I'm getting emotional <laughs> um when we met at gather last year and you approached me, you and Carolyn, who I've got to have on this pod at some point, because her story is already a whole other crazy, no, yeah. amazing journey. Um, but you guys immediately, I was like, I don't know what I, how I said it, what I said, but you were, guys were like, you're a motivational speaker. Like, do you do talks? Like, you literally asked me, like, do you do talks? You should do talks to the look. <laughs> and I was like, how did you know that based off of what I just said and did? Like, I I didn't think I did anything of, I was just talking at crazy. that point. Yeah. And you were adamant. I saw you guys' faces. You guys were like, oh my gosh, like, you're a speaker. And <laughs> you're I'm like, like yeah, this is what you do. Meanwhile, you're like, I literally just moved here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm right. I was like, I'm but trying to figure out what that was like. like. <laughs> and you guys were like, you guys were just like, you are a speaker and you spoke it. I sat oh with God. that. I I have sat with that memory often because I was like, even when I was just being me mm -hmm. and I was still struggling, like, what do I, I don't even know how to tell people what I'm doing. You guys yeah. just seeing me in my regular, I just love being in front of people element. You guys were like, you are a speaker. Like, I want to learn from you. Can you mm -hmm. teach us stuff? And I was like, I, the day to day doesn't tell me that. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, the day to day, you might have that one day where you have the Eunice and the Carolyn coming and they're like, you're doing this, like, you're this, or, great. And then you have yeah. all these other days in between where you're like, crickets, 
no viewership, low viewer- viewership. That one person who commented, it's always your <laughs> the same relative. Like, like those type of things, you're like, maybe that was a fluke. And then it happens again at random. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, I see it in you. You have mm-hmm. this, and they say exactly what you need to hear right at the time you need to hear it. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I not? I'm not hearing it consistently. And it's like, almost yeah. you want to rely on the consistent reminder from Mm -hmm. outside of you and I'm just learning in recent months that I can't do that even even if I got to the point where it was like every day I'm bombarded with you're amazing oh my gosh you're a speaker I just have to know what's already in me Mm -hmm. because when people are gone and I'm by Mm -hmm. myself do I remember that I'm I am still Candace I am still, I'm not even who, I'm not even what I'm doing. It's just the essence of me is speaking and pouring into people, whatever that looks like. Do I remember that when I go to bed at night, when I wake up, when I'm praying and asking God, what the heck am I doing today? Like that moment for me was a shift in what I do and how I keep pressing forward to the idea that, you know what, it might not be seen every day, but someone sees it on on a day. And the day mm-hmm. that they see it, I need to remember there's value in what they're seeing, even when they're not there to tell me that day. Like, mm-hmm. keep going, keep trying, keep finding inspiration from what other people are already doing that you're inspired by Mm -hmm. without getting jealous Mm -hmm. without comparing yourself (laughs) and turning turning your homework and your research into a pity party that happens sometimes like i was planning on being mad at myself today and i am now (laughs) right like all those things um you've been very vulnerable in your journey even this year going from you're losing your account, getting it back, trying to figure it out, and it grows and and all that stuff. Um, I just appreciate I appreciate you because I I look I look up to you and how you navigate this space so much. Even though I don't say it all the time, um, I'm I'm daily studying what you're doing, um, and it's being able to also kind of have some back backseat, you know, behind the scenes, understanding that it's not always been fun or smooth mm-hmm. or sure, you know, um, has, has really helped me. Um, especially on the days where I'm crying. So. <laughs> oh yeah, girl. Well, let me tell you, thank you so much for that. I, I, appreciate you saying that too but I'm also here to encourage you and so like no I don't have it all together there's something nice to hear other people be like nope I'm also trying to figure it out and I haven't figured it all out right because you're like oh that's what I feel too right and me and my friend we've listened to other bigger creators than us say the same thing so that feeling never really goes away if it's not one area in your journey it's going to be something else Right. And so it's getting almost used to that to where it, you just become, it just like slips, slides off of you <laughs> and you become, you have to become resilient. Right. And just, I like what you said earlier, but like you have to do it for yourself and know you, like when you're by yourself, I think it's important to know your value and worth rather than relying on other people's validation of, oh, I like this video or I like what you said here or whatever. Maybe they don't tell you every day, like you have such a gift because we have to learn to know that of ourselves. Yeah. And sometimes that's hard, right? Don't get me wrong, like I said, I think it helps to hear from other people. We, I think we need to hear from other people every once in a while, but we can't rely on that either, right? And that's where I've had to learn too. I'm like, all right, well, this video got 50 views. Let me try to hit more the next time, <laughs> you know? And so it's just like, you just have to show up for yourself and know why you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, girl. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to unpack that. Thank you for 
sharing your story with me, sharing your story with everyone else. And um, how can people find you or learn about how to figure out when you're going on a trip that they might want to go on? Oh, well, <laughs> they want to go to Cambodia in November. There's still time. Okay. <laughs> um, it's actually pinned to my Instagram profile. So it's uh, my Instagram is at rated D food. It's also for YouTube. You can also search Rated D for Vegan and on TikTok as well, Rated D Food. And then my website is ratedvfood.com. So you can hear a lot of my stories, see a lot of my videos, and see me eat on social media constantly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm just really excited. I'm excited to see what each year has to bring, right? I feel grateful for everything that God has gotten me through this year has literally been about surrender and growth i know we talked about that another gather gather earlier that's how those are the two words that i would define this year with right and just i'm excited i'm so excited for your journey like you have no idea i've actually started helping another friend with like social media like reels 101 like here's a worksheet of like framework so i want to talk to you about that afterwards so okay girl but yeah but yeah i i I already know you're going to do so well. Ch- I want you to know that I am your biggest fan right now. I am your cheerleader. If you ever need it, if you never need to vex, cry, whatever, you call me because I I will be there. I've been there. So, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, y'all, thank you guys so much for watching um and listening to today's episode if there are any topics uh questions any people that you want on this show make sure that you either send me a dm or tag me on socials either at candace olushala or at first basel um and there's multiple ways that you can support this show obviously sharing it um, would be wonderful. Um, and there's other ways that will be in the show notes. So you can check that out. Um, but I'm I'm so glad that this is <laughs> the first real um, interview episode of this season. Because as you can see, I needed it. And um, I'm... I'm going to be sitting in this for a while, guys. I I hope you guys enjoy being on this journey with me. You've seen me go through a lot of different things since the pandemic online. And I want to be honest. I want to be pouring my whole heart into what I'm doing. And in, in hopes that all of you will learn to accept every nook and cranny of the journeys that you're taking because no one has a clean slate of a journey except jesus so i love you guys god bless take care stay safe and we'll talk soon guys bye